35 minutes. Uh, Vinny sat down with Pedro Grafal. We'll react to it after. Um, but Pedro, uh, you started off asking Pedro, you know, you had this vision when you started off managing this team. Where did it all go wrong? Um, here's 35 minutes with Vinny and Pedro. Uh, a lot of things happen. Um, and there, none of them are excuses. This is not an excuse-making session. Um, none of it's excuses. Between me learning them, lem- them learning me, injuries, um, heartbreaks, um, tough losses, tough streaks. Um, you know, we never really got a chance to even breathe. I mean, we, we, we played well the first series, came in here, got our butts kicked against San Francisco, and then we left on the road. I think it was to Pittsburgh and Minnesota. Played okay, but lost, I think, four out of six. Came back again, I think, for Philly and Baltimore, you know. Um, I think it was four out of six, too, that we lost. And then we went on that horrific uh, road trip, you know, that we lost, you know, I think seven in a row, six or seven in a row. Um, Ended up losing ten in a row. And then never really bounced back. And um, I don't really have an answer to that. All I know is not it's not our style of play that we envisioned, and it's definitely not the style of play that we will have moving forward. Um, that's the only thing I can say about it. Like, um, it's a very tough question um, that I don't have a complete answer to. Um, other than at times we did, at times we didn't. You know, um, we got to be better, way better in that in that regard. A thing that fans latch on to because again they're only seeing through the TV screen or from what they see in the stands. Sometimes they can see a lack of effort, a lack of want, for lack of a better term, from from the players especially after things went so poorly as you described in the right. first month did you see some of that do you see uh, a lot of that and were you either surprised or what was the the, tr- the attempt at a solution moving forward on that front um, specifically you know a lot of that I guess you can talk about it now but you couldn't talk about it at that time because it would probably give competitive advantage you know a lot a lot of it was our guys were hurt, you know, and we spoke prior to, you know, whatever it is, your percent that you're available at today, that's what I want you to give me. Um, And those are things that I don't, I don't, I'm not going to talk on that. You know, I'm not going to go on the record in that, you know, after a game or prior to a game and just say so-and-so can't give me this because he's nicked up. And and that happened a ton. Um, Um... more than what I've ever envisioned or ever been a part of. But these guys are talented, so I want them in the lineup. And I chose, and I, I you know, you can go back. I've, I've, I've said this over and over again. I choose the bat over the legs. I'm not expecting so-and-so to run. I'm not expecting, you know, because I choose the bat over the legs. If I didn't, then I wouldn't play them. Um, so that happened a lot. Um, like I said, this is not an excuse. Injuries played a big part of that. And then there was some lapses too. There were some lapses of just lack of focus and, you know, but I'm, I'm to blame for that because I'm the one that's got to fix that, you know, and address that. So uh, I've never hid from that. All I know is that we're fixing it. Um, is, was it a lot? More than what I would want, but not as much as the perception is I think the perception has been like steadily increasing over the years and it's magnified and I don't compare ourselves to any other club or anything like that but it's it's kind of the way of the game a little bit but it's not the way we envision our game so it's not I don't know if I'm saying it right I'm not comparing myself to other teams but it's almost like Oh, this is how we're supposed to play. No, it's not how we're supposed to play. And that's something that I got to, that I'm going to bear down on. That leads into, I I guess, kind of a two separate questions or a two-part question. On the field, we've seen 
a lot of the same things that we saw a year ago, you know, that, that contributed to the disappointment a year ago and have contributed to the, to the record this year. How does that get cleaned up on the field? And then in the clubhouse, in guys' heads yeah. maybe, how, how do you guys clean that aspect of things up um, as well? That's not that hard to do. I don't think. I mean, our guys, for the most part now, are really going home healthy and ready to go, for the most part. There's some guys that are still nicked up, but nobody's going home, you know, as of right now, we have two games left, but as of right now, nobody's going home to really rehab anything. They're going home to prepare themselves for next year. Uh, the mindset's going to change. It's pretty simple. It's just the, the our approach, the mindset, just to... You know, I hate talking about this because I've talked about it before and it didn't transpire this year. So why would, why would anybody believe it'll transpire for next year? Um, but, you know, it's just it's just time to go show it. Really, I'm not I'm not going to sit here. And, you know, there's nothing I can say. I mean, it, it, it didn't look good this year. It hasn't turned out good. We're fixing it. Can those same guys make it look good? Yeah. Yeah, they can. Now, this, you know, there's no guarantees to anything. I mean, you know, as if, if those same guys, I mean, a, a winner's a winner. And a lot of things happen in the winter. So, you know, Chris and his staff will will assess it, look at it, and put the best team on the field, you know. So, um, but, yeah, can those guys, those guys have the talent to do it. I think it's important for the health part of it to be on point. If it's not, and that's a tough then that's a tough ask. Health health is really important with this club. Really, really important. You've talked a number of times about you and Chris very much being on the same page, having the same goal. How much input are you going to have on the front office bringing the kind of players in here that you want to have in there? Or is it just you guys are so on the same page that anything they do, you, you know that it will be the right I'm, way? I'm 100% um, um, let me see how I put this. Like I, I trust his judgment and his vision 100%. Um, I'm, I'm here for, you know, for any communication that he wants to have. We communicate a ton, you know, so far. Um, but I trust the, I trust him and the people that they've, they brought in. I mean, so we, we see things the same. Um, so I don't, I don't need to be involved in, you know, day to day or anything like that. I mean, I, he's, he sees it. He knows what he wants. We're aligned. And he's going to do his thing. You know, he's really good at what he does. Is it a different vision than his predecessors, the, the, guy, the guys who hired you? Um, you know, yes and no. Um, I mean, talent is talent. I mean, everybody sees talent, and everybody knows talent wins. Um We'll see on that. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a possibility. I mean, he's he's been down here um, in the clubhouse as a player. Uh, he knows how this thing breathes. Um, so he's got he's got his ideas and he's got his you know and he's a good leader. Like he he um, and he's always been a good leader. Um, so he knows what what's needed down here. So yeah. yes and no. Not sure yet. That part we don't know. We heard a lot in August, particularly at the trade deadline, that those moves that were made were a positive in getting the clubhouse to where you guys want it to be. Were those, was that necessary to, to make the change, to make those changes to get um, it to where you wanted to be? Look, we were, we were. I don't know how many games under we were at the deadline. Twenty under. Twenty. About twenty under. I mean, those moves were made to make us better. Mm -hmm. You know, talent wise. I mean, those guys. You know, as as everybody's seen, those guys were going to other clubs to. And they've done well and helped other clubs do what they wanted to do. And in return, you know, we stocked up our, our system at the upper levels, and they've made us they've made us better going into 24 and 25. Um, so, you know, if it happens that way, that you know that the you know the environment's better, then so be it. But that's not why the moves were made. The moves were made because look, you know, we were 20 under. Um, the chances were slim that we were going to be able to make a run at this thing, and you only get one opportunity. There's only one trade deadline. You only get one opportunity, and at that particular time, 
you know, it was the right thing to do to, to acquire, you know, young talent at the upper levels that can help us move forward in 24 and 25. What did you learn about managing this team that you're already like, okay, when we get going again in February and March, I know to do this instead of, or in addition to what was You know, before? on a personal end, um, you know, a lot of the stuff I can't talk about. Mm-hmm. I just, I just can't. Um, and I, and I, even if I could, I don't want to, because I don't want to, like, continue to. It's about wins and losses. We got to go out there and prove it, right? Um, on a personal note, um, I've been in this game a long time, and I've gone through 162 games. Um, but you don't really realize how long 162 games are until you sit in this chair, and. At the beginning, it was almost like day to day, like like we lose the end of the world, as opposed to you know, like it's a long season. Um, I don't think it affected the leadership, but I think it it maybe affected me mentally. Like every I took every single loss really hard, um, and you know I should, but there's another game tomorrow. You know, um, that front, um, I've gotten better at in the last couple months, for sure. Um, And I need to be really cognizant of that next year, you know, to where, okay, you know, knowing where we're at, going out there, competing, right, and flushing things. And, like, I want, like, I need to do what I preach, flush it and move on. I, I need to do that, too. And I take I take losses hard, and I don't. It's it's not it's not caring less because that's not what it is. It's understanding that there's a process to 162 games, and things can change quickly I mean, for the better and for the worse. But they can definitely change for the better. Given I don't know if that makes any sense, but it it, it a seven and 21 start for a first year manager in a team that's supposed to be competing. It's tough. It, it, it was tough. It was tough. But I've learned how to deal with it. I've learned a lot. Um, I've written down a lot. I've reflected a lot, and I will continue to do that. And I will be 100 times better next year for it. This is what I love to do. This is what I was born to do. And I'm grateful to have this opportunity to do it again. I mean, I am. And it'll, 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 I'll be slightly different, um, and this will be different. Maybe, maybe that's part of this answer to the next one here. But you know, given the circumstances, obviously, it's a lot of talking about what went wrong. What do you think? What are you proud of? What do you, what do you think you did well this year, you and your staff? I, you know, I think as a staff, myself, and as a staff, we just stayed, you know, we stayed calm, like. When I, when I talk about taking losses hard, I'm talking about taking losses home. And you got to flush those things at home. It can't be 24-7 just because the mind doesn't work that way. You know, you got to be able to turn it off a little bit and then come back and turn it, and turn it back on. But in the midst of this storm, um, we've never wavered in our work. Uh, everybody stayed calm. Uh, the staff did a really good job of just continuing to teach and and work and just be relentless with that and prepare. That can be questioned because we didn't win, but the preparation was really good, you know, and the work was really good. And these guys out there really worked. Very few times did I have to say we need to pick it up. Very few times as far as the game preparation and the, and the pregame work that part I'm really really proud of I'm really proud of some of the individuals out there that made um, that developed as individuals you know, Luis Robert Moncada you know TA in the midst of his adversity and what he learned and you know and how he got through it Dylan Cease going through some adversity and finishing strong I mean there's 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 some good things on the on the individual front and my messaging is that, you know, our all our successes are tied together. You know, we need to we need to turn this thing around and and watch 
how everyone benefits from a winning ball club, you know, and a winning environment. One thing I wanted to make sure I asked you because it's a question I get all the time is, while Oscar Colas was struggling, you routinely talked to us about what was what was bothering you about the way he was playing. Fans see or have the perception of similar mistakes being made by other players. Specifically, a lightning rod this year was Tim Anderson with the with the numbers that he's put up. We didn't hear the same kind of language from you in regards to him or some other players. They want to know what is right. the difference. Here? Well, the difference is that Tim Anderson's been in the league for a long time and he's done it over and over and over again. Um, and he got and he got ample time in the minor leagues to develop. Um, Oscar hasn't. Um, Oscar got here quickly. You know, and he also had, you know, spent two years in Japan that, you know, I don't, nobody knows how he was developed over there. Um, got here and moved up quickly. I think prior to this year, I think he had maybe 50 at bats in AAA. Am I right? Yeah, it wasn't much. It wasn't much. Um, however you want to put it, no matter how good players are, they're either going to go through adversity in the minor leagues or they're going to go through adversity in the major leagues. You're going to go through it at some point. He went through it up here. He went through it early on. Things started to speed up for him. He needed to go back down and just reset, right? He did some of the things that he needed to do down there. Not 100%, but he did some of them. Let's give him another shot and see where he's at. At some point, you got to try it. you got to see where the development is. And then when you come up here and routinely make the same mistakes, it's just an indication to where, you know what, the talent's really good. He's a part of the future. But we need to continue to develop that, that talent down there to a point, to, in, in a place where it doesn't affect him mentally. This is, this is a tough level when you're not having success. And it could work in many, many different directions. You know, and it's not just physical. You can work on the mental side, you know, a lot um, to where now you're going to have to address the mind and the physical stuff. And we just didn't want it to get that far. You know, just go down there and, and continue to work and, and continue to develop. And he's going to go to winter ball, you know, and, and continue to develop there. You know, but every case is different. Everybody's different. And Tim had success in the minor leagues, was there a while, had success in the big leagues, has been here a while having success. He's facing some adversity. You don't send him down. Every, for every, everybody else, for that matter here, it's similar. I mean, they've had success. You know, Roberts had success here. Eloy's success with Mankata. You know, all these guys have had success here. So it's pretty, it's not comparable. You know, th this kid just needs to continue to develop in an environment where it's not Everybody on top of you every single day just detailing everything you do right and everything you do wrong. And, and also, too, as I'm sure you would not only agree but confirm, just because you're not saying stuff to us doesn't mean that you're not saying stuff to, to players, right? Correct. Yeah. That's, with me, that is going to be 100% the case. I'm not the type of manager that needs approval from the media or or to show the media or to show anyone that I am doing things, the things I need to do to try to right this ship. I, I'm not that type. I, I don't need that. I, I'll wear it and that's it. I don't, I don't need, I'm never going to share my meetings with media or anyone the meetings that I have with the club or with individuals. I'm never going to do that. I don't, that's not, that's not who I am. So many times I've had friends or people hint and people tell me this year, like, hey, why don't you, you know, meet with the team? Why don't you, you know, I don't, I don't, I, don't know. I might be doing that. I might not. I don't, you know, but it's happening. I mean, it's just not something that I'm going to share. That's just not how I'm wired. Um, I think, I believe in what happens in here stays in here, you know, and 
if it means that people are talking negative about it, it's fine. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable. You know, I'm comfortable in my own skin knowing that, you know, I'm doing what I have to do to individu- as in, individually and as a team to try to right this shit. You have a catching background, obviously. Um, what have you seen from Corey Lee this year that would indicate that he's capable of having that number one catching job for an entire season, perhaps? Um, he's got every characteristic to be a really good major league catcher. He's smart. He calls a good game. Um, he leads. He's um, he's curious about his pitchers, about their personalities, about what makes them tick, what they can and can't do. He's curious about it, and that's part of being a good catcher. You got to be really curious on the guys that you're catching, and when you when you have that type of curiosity, you develop great relationships. And when you develop relationships, they know that you care and, and, and they can trust you. Um, and it just kind of frees them up to just pitch. And that's the catcher's job. And he has all those characteristics, all of them. Now, he has a ways to go. Um, but I was just happy and thrilled that he was able to get these last you know, five weeks or whatever it is he's been here um, under his belt so that we can learn from this and be ready to go in the, in the spring. And he's got to compete for a job. I mean, it's not. I'm not going to just hand it to him. He's got to compete. But uh, he's certainly got every characteristic of, of becoming an everyday guy. I've heard in the past that pitchers are very receptive to every single bit of information and coaching they get. A new pitch, put move your arm this way. Sure. Might be, and we've heard in that same explanation in the past from different people. Hitters are not that way. They, they rely on what they know because it got them to this point. Have you found that these guys, these hitters, have been receptive to what you and your coaches have been trying um, to, to, to say? It took a little bit just because it's, you have to develop relationships. And when guys have, have had success um, or some form of success, it, it's hard to make changes and it's hard to just develop relationships because it's about trust and the one thing that every single player wants to do is just hit and be great at hitting um there's still a ways to go on that on that end but there there has been some strides made on the relational part on how we want our offense to roll really um but there's not really much that we can hang our hat on and say, okay, we're headed in the right direction because we just haven't performed as a group enough to say that. But as individuals, there's been some, there's been some positives, you know, um, obviously Robert had a great year and he's just now tapping into his ability. And he knows that the one thing he's worked on this year that, that maybe he hasn't that much in the past was, you know, his plate discipline and zone discipline. And, you know, and he knows that that's what's going to make him either great or just an average or above average player, you know. Um, Mankata, after the injuries, have shown now what he can and, and what he can be. Again, he's done it before. I think the injuries really affected him, you know, especially when you have a back injury. It, it's tough to recover from it, and then it's tough to even get back to feeling like normal again and he has for the past whatever 40 couple games 42 games or so um Eloy's been off and on but he's shown ability to be able to just be an aircraft carrier like he he can he can carry a team Uh, TA I really believe his his knee injury affected him and then you know once he was facing adversity not hitting you know it affected him mentally too you know because like why isn't this happening and then it becomes mechanical and then you know it's it's it was a it was a tough year um on the injury front for us um Vaughn is just tapping into his potential I mean he's young I, I think he's gonna he's gonna cap out at a at a level where we're all gonna be really happy with him 
So as a group, we haven't really clicked together. Um, but there's a nice core here that, um, that can get some things done. We just got to continue to work on it. We got we to gotta work. I mean, we got to we got to continue to work. They got to continue to buy in and we got to continue to get creative. We got to, you know, it's just it has to happen. You had a re- previous relationship with Andrew Benintendi, glowing review about him, obviously, from when you were with him in Kansas City. And you've told us throughout this whole season how we haven't seen the real guy. Mm. He has had in recent history because he's gone to a few different ballparks that were his home ballpark talking about hitting to the ballpark and doing that kind of thing ballpark independent what is Andrew Benintendi at his best we're going to see him next year at his best um, you know he had that, that hand injury last year where he was rehabbing all off season couldn't get in the gym to do what he normally does um, he's talking about that already about a big part of this off season is getting that strength back that you know that he normally comes into spring training with you know that's a big part to his game. The bat to ball skills are elite. Um, controls the strike zone. It, it's all a matter of, you know, just now building himself back to, and having the strength that um, that he's had in years past, where he comes in and, you know, he drives balls because he was able to get after it in the off season. Um, this was a tough year for him as in the off season when he had that that hammock and he had another injury. Uh, it was a tough year, and and. I can't tell you how many times it was a two o'clock, three o'clock decision on whether he could play or not. I mean, I, I, I mean, it happened a lot to where, hey, I'm gonna, I send that lineup out the night before, and it would be like, you know, I don't know if he can play, and I'm like, well, I'm gonna send it out with him on it, and if he can't, he can't, and if he can, he'll stay on it. He goes, I got to send something out. I don't want to not put him on there and then have to take somebody out and add him. So I can't tell you how many times, you know, that, you know, that happened because of, because of his hand. Um, I mean, he was hobbling to the all-star break, you know, and the all-star break really helped him, you know. Um, So knowing what I know, he's had a good year knowing what I know you know and I say that comfortably and I say that because he deserves for me to say that because he hasn't complained about it one time and hasn't talked about it one time he's just playing I'm playing and I'm gonna play with pain no problem I'm playing you know and even when he wasn't playing it'd be like hey if you need me I'm in there you know if you need me I can I can play defense a few times it was like I can play defense and I can run but I can't hit He's 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 had he's a tough kid. It's a really tough kid. We haven't we haven't even come close to seeing the best of Benintendi yet. Not even close. We'll see it. Whether it's specifically about him or not, a thing that gets asked again by fans constantly is would that have would that have been a reason to put him on the IL? You know, or or player X, you know, if they're dealing with a, an if, injury like that? If um if you put him on the IL on the IL and after that period it it would be fixed. Sure. But if you're going to put him on the I.L. and then when he comes back, it's going to be close to the same, then play through it. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and those are decisions that the players make. Even if it's clearly hampering their ability to, to produce the way they want to and you want oh, them to? Okay, but produce the way they've produced in the past, but you got to weigh in, does it help us right now too? You know, that production that he's been giving us has helped us. I mean, he's got, what, 35, 36 doubles. Um, you know, he's still running a 330, 335 on base. Um, he still runs the bases extremely well. You can count on him in left field. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, he still he still produces at that, at that level um, enough to, you know, to be in the lineup every day, you know. Um, when players like when players want to play and they and they say they can get through it, let them go. Especially guys like him that have been have been through it before and have played through some stuff before. Plenty of mystery right now about what your rotation might look like next year with the you know having those trades being made at the at the trade deadline and all that stuff. 
you know, Kopech has obviously not had anywhere close to the year that anybody would want him to. What is your um, read on what Ethan is going to be able to do to come opening day deliver you guys a rotation that you um, can count on? Ethan and Bannister. Yeah. Bannister was a great acquisition for us. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I know that Bannister and Ethan together with Gene and Chris and Josh and you know them up there acquiring players and doing what they know how to do, we're going to look better. We're going to be way better. As far as Kopech, you know, him and Bannister have a history back from Boston. Um, that in itself, it's a positive. Because again, it, it, it's all based. This is all based on trust, you know. And when a pitcher has trust in a coach or in a couple of coaches, and you know things just get better quickly, um, the ability's there, the talent, the ability. The he's performed at a high level in spurts. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you know Bannister and, and Ethan and our pitching department can. Can, can pull together here because I know we'll be better. You've talked a lot about the time for talk being done about promising people what, what's going to come and you know the, the answers on the field, right? Wins and losses. Yeah. But forget maybe the people who have been... Which is just contradictory to what I'm saying because we're talking about it. True right? enough, true enough. Um, but I mean, I'm, you, you, you get asked questions, you got to answer them, but I don't... But it, it is about wins and losses on the field. That's what it's about. I that was going toward a place where forget about maybe the people who have been watching this all year if a potential free agent acquisition is sitting here or a a guy that you guys pick up in a trade or even just the guys in that clubhouse right now and they want to know skip what kind of team are we going to be next year what would you say to them you're going to enjoy yourself we're going to play a good brand of baseball you're going to enjoy yourself we're going to have we're, we're we're going to have a good time winning winning baseball games and to him, I'll explain it. To you, I'm done explaining it because it's about proving it. It's not about talking about it anymore. You know, but to the player, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll explain how. But it, nobody wants to hear how. They just want to see us do it. That's the reality of it. You know, and that's what I would want as a fan. Stop talking to me about how you're going to do it. I just want you to do it. How important is it to have a good time? We saw this team a few years ago be kind of the, the pinnacle of that fun on the field. Again, that you can see. Maybe you can't always see whether what's going on in guys' heads and stuff like that, but it was very apparent. And as the wins and losses have gone the way they have, it's, it, it just started off. Apparent. It just we just never hit it a stride. We never we never we never hit a winning streak, a good winning streak. Uh, that was enough to get us back to a, you know, so losing is no fun to anyone, you know, and um, having fun, it's that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. But it's also winning. You know, when you're winning, you're having fun. When you're losing, you're not, you know, and that goes for us in here, for the fans, for you guys, for everybody in the building, everybody that's watching on TV, for everyone. You know, when we're when we're winning, everyone's having fun, asking great questions. The answers are great. Everybody's smiling. You know, and when you're losing, it's not. You know, but again, I mean, we. I, I'm the only time I want to talk about it is when I'm asking at mass questions. Other than that, I'm not. You know, and I'm really not going to dig too deep into it because it's it's about us proving it on the field. That's what it's about. But I'm really comfortable and excited about Chris and his staff. They've done it. They've they've done this. Like Gene Watson's been a part of four World Series teams. You know, Josh Barfield's coming from the team that's going into the playoffs. Bannister's been a part of winning, winning organizations. You know, in Boston and San Francisco. Um, you know. Chris has been here through it all. He understands it, you know, through the winning, through some losing, you know, and he's been running the minor leagues, which, you know what I think about that. I mean, I've talked about it. If you can do that, you can, 
you can basically do anything in the game. That's one of the hardest jobs ever. Um, and I'm just excited to watch them assemble it, you know, and then I'll get a chance to manage it. And that is the sit-down interview with Vinny Duber and Pedro Grafol. Herb, do you have my hundred bucks? I have it somewhere. Okay. It's um, in the bank. That little uh, mention of Andrew Benatendi and you bringing up, hey, you know, why wasn't he on the IL? Just made me look up the White Sox position from the one and two hole, you know, where it ranked in Major League Baseball, the production they got out of the first and second spot in the lineup. Very low, I would imagine. Could you guess where they ranked out of 30 teams? Last, probably. Oh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> 79, way to runs created plus uh, behind every single team in baseball. Who was uh, the next team? Do you know? Can you guess? Um, the A's. No, oh. the, the A's were four. The Guardians. No, the A's, the A's were the, fourth in baseball. Uh, 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 fourth, fourth worst. Oh, fourth worst. Uh, Guardians were fifth worst. Royal, Royals were seventh worst. So there were seven teams with under one hundred per uh, one hundred weighted runs created plus uh, production out of the one and two hole. Uh, K- Kansas City uh, was uh, ninety seven. Washington was ninety seven. Cleveland ninety six. Oakland eighty eight. Detroit eighty eight. Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. DNVRs, uh, 81, and then the Sox at uh, 79. So, Whew. yikes. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll take away uh, some of our big uh, takeaways. And uh, shout-out to Vinny Duber for getting that. Uh, Brandon says, great interview. You hit on most of the questions we've wanted to know all season. I think that was the thing that it was, you know, great. It was you know, casual, but also you hit what people wanted to hear. Um, and you got more of a, a laid-back, I would say, Pedro Grofault. 